Today, uh, we look forward to hearing from Craig about Environments for Living, a builder uh, water efficiency program. Uh, Craig's got some interesting uh, survey results that uh, he'll share with us. So, um, uh, Craig, welcome to the podium. One of the things that's gotten me very involved where most of my career I've been do designing plumbing products, uh, faucets and uh, control valves primarily, to what's gotten me involved in looking at systems and the systems approach. I think you'll find uh, some of the results of our study pretty interesting. Okay, Environments for Living very quickly started out as a building science program because uh, we have a, a large contracting business in terms of installing insulation in homes and wanting to make sure homes were durable uh, and energy efficient. Um, and so through the program what we do is do plan reviews, uh, test the homes when they're done, and at closing on a new construction project we provide the homeowner with a warranty based that guarantees the uh, energy usage in their home and also the comfort of the home because we do a lot of indoor environmental quality and, and circulation of air, uh, fresh air in the homes. And what we've done over the last several years is start to add water efficiency into the program, not that we're guaranteeing anything about water efficiency, but to leverage uh, better homes that perform better uh, based on the building science principles that, uh, that we have. And, um, up till uh, the beginning of this year, our water efficiency specifications covered pretty much the traditional things that we're seeing. Uh, standard kitchen at 2.2 gallons a minute, labs at 1.5, uh, which matched water sense. Uh, shower heads at 2.0 gallons per minute. Uh, we require uh, high efficiency toilets. Um, and then where the builder offers uh, appliances, Energy Star appliances, particularly a, uh, a water efficient clothes washer. And then we had some uh, recommended practices in terms of uh, plumbing system design to minimize the water wasted waiting for hot water. Um, and sort of the net effect of all that, if a builder offered appliances too, we could achieve something along the lines of a 40% overall water savings in, in, uh, in environments for living home. This comparing it to the 1999 uh, residential end uses of water study that uh, AWWA uh, published and I understand that they're starting a, a follow-up, uh, you know, 10 years later study, which we'll probably see in another year or two. Um, then with uh, uh, the advent of WaterSense for Homes being uh, finally published and established, we're in the process right now of changing our specs to match WaterSense for Homes. So for indoor water, uh, a lot of it's the same except that WaterSense for Homes now has a requirement for engineered plumbing in terms of the volume in the pipes between the water heater and the outlets. So where that was a recommended practice, now it's, now it's going to become a requirement. Um, and uh, in water sense for homes, if you have appliances, uh, they need to be Energy Star clothes washers. Um, and then they've also got some specs for evaporative cooling, water softeners, and water filtration and purification equipment efficiency if that's used in the home. So that'll be part of this. And then something we'd never done before in Environments for Living is include outdoor water and to match water sense for homes, we're adding those requirements in um, as a parallel. Um, and on the energy side of our business, one of the things we've done is certified uh, our testers to do the various testing and so we're getting those certified to do the water sense for homes testing as well. So we're thinking about next steps. Um, as I said, we've changed it, or we're in the process right now of changing to water sense for homes on this program. And uh, we think that'll give us some leverage because builders have been very interested in the environments for living home for green homes based on the energy guarantee and warranty that we give, which is different than the, gr the normal green building program. Uh, so we're trying to leverage that. Uh, one of the things I'm interested in as we go through the next year or two is to see, could we go ahead in our program and reduce uh, the water volume in the piping. Uh, so again, we make further limits uh, and reductions on water wasted waiting for hot water. Uh, and I've been working with Gary Klein and this year we're looking to try and roll out on a test basis a plumbing plan uh, design spreadsheet so that plumbers or builders could go ahead and take a look at where the water heaters are, where the outlets are, uh, and run some calculations to figure out what would be the volume in the pipes between the water heater and the various outlets and to look at options that would allow them to develop some and choose from the most efficient design. Um, 
And of course, one of the things I mentioned on the panel yesterday, we have a, a big issue here in terms of educating builders, architects, and plumbers about the different aspects of uh, engineered plumbing design. Um, and then <clears throat> at the end of last year, we uh, went to Indianapolis and instrumented uh, four homes of employees at Delta Fawcett. We did that because it was easy to get into, and, and uh, we developed a nice wireless system. And um, this is a typical, typical house in California with the water heaters uh, in the garage. Um, and so you have long pipe runs, and so that's part of the education about what can we do to put water heaters closer uh, to the outlets to minimize the piping. Um, so moving back to the, uh, the water use study, we did four homes. There were two, two adults and two children in each home. Uh, we made sure the children were old enough that their normal practice was to take showers. Um, and, that's, uh, and we did that starting uh, in early December and ran through uh, February and collected uh, the data. Uh, what we did was we put a flow meter with a uh, temperature measurement on the hot and cold water inlets for each lavatory faucet under the cabinet. Um, and uh, since we couldn't get to the supplies on showers, we put uh, a single one on shower arms and uh, uh, collected data. And, and we got a data line every time we either saw a tenth of a gallon per minute change in the flow rate or a 10 degree temperature change in the water temperature. Um, so we got somewhere between 150 and 450 lines of data per day in each of these homes over the two month period. We were literally buried in data. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that I confirmed, which we'd seen in the residential uses of water study, is that there's a, a quite a bit of variation from house to house. So if we look at uh, the shower usage, um, the average uh, gallons uh, per use uh, for the adults was 13. Uh, each day for children, it was 16.7. Um, and if we took it all together, it was uh, a little under 15 gallons uh, per use on a shower. And you can see the standard deviations, and I put in a three sigma. So um, the, uh, the three sigma standard deviations are uh, greater than the average. Uh, so you can see there was a huge amount of variability uh, in the showers uh, day to day and from family to family. Um, and then uh, same thing here on the duration in terms of the times. At one family that uh, the, uh, the husband and wife, I think, they grew up camping, and when their kids were young, they did a lot of camping, and they typically took three to four minute showers, which is the low end of the, of the group. Um, and I think those are, you know, I characterize them as camper showers. Uh, there were other people that took much longer showers. Um, and then family to family, um, for uh, faucet use, um, the high usage from faucets in terms of gallons per day for the home was 32. Um, and the low was 13 and a half, so we had one family which was really efficient and thrifty in terms of not using faucets very often. Um, you can see the minutes there, and then one of the interesting things is the number of uses per day where somebody was actually turning on and off a faucet, we counted those, and it varied from an average of 61 to 28. Uh, and then you can also see the uh, average, there wasn't as much variation actually in shower use in terms of uh, average gallons uh, of, of water used for showering uh, each day. Um, some other observations. Um, uh, I was able on showers in particular to go in and take a look. We could tell as the temperature was coming up on a shower, um, we'd wait, we could, we could mark the time that it started and there'd be a time when the uh, shower temperature was adjusted and that we took that to be uh, an indication that somebody had actually stepped into the shower and adjusted it to the, uh, the temperature they want, because usually the, the temperature would go higher than the shower temperature and it would be adjusted a little bit lower for the user. So uh, over the houses, we were able to make an estimate on how many gallons per day that uh, water wasted waiting for hot water was. 